After the last video, we got a correction from a couple guys, but it gives us an opportunity to figure out a cool way to fix it, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and uh, on the last video that I put out where we were diving into setting up the Holly bass tune, a couple subscribers jumped down in the comments and made me aware of the fact that the Holly VE table is actually a percentage bass table. What does that mean to us? Well, for one, we set the table up wrong because we use the uh, GM VE style table that HP Tuners uses, which is actually a representation of how much air mass is in the cylinders. So we need to go in and correct that. And I'm going to show you kind of a, a process that I think should work on it. It's really kind of cool. We get to dive in, do a little bit of tweaking with it, and then we will come out with a table that will work properly for the Holly setup. That being said, the big difference, as I said, is the Holly is a percentage of it saying that 100% is your cylinders are pulling in their full displacement. That's why you have to plug in your displacement underneath the engine parameter settings. Whereas the uh, GM one is more of a measurement of what the actual mass of air is that it is drawing in at the set RPM and map pressure. Uh, kind of works the same, but uh, instead of having a physical value, we say this physical value is what it is, then we're taking a percentage of it. How do we get that percentage though? Let's jump over to the laptop and check it out. Okay, so now that we got everything pulled up, in order to do this, the first thing that we need to do is open everything up. Open up the editor, open up your Terminator X uh, software, get your VVE table pulled up, and you need to double check to make sure that your map uh, rows match your uh, rows on the HP tuner. So you can come in here and if you right click on here, you can go into the row access and edit these to anything, make them match up. Now. We're going to be running the two and a half bar in this because we're eventually putting boost on this situation. And whenever we do that, it expands this thing out to an area of the map that's not viable. There's no real data in there. And so we kind of have to smooth some of this stuff over to make it look good. So look for any weird stuff on this, like this area down here, we need to smooth out that one. I'm not too worried about that's just a weird zone issue, but I'll show you kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this paste it down here to get this area flat. And this is, as I said, just to get us up and running. Then I'm gonna select this thing, go back over to the graph, smooth it out a few times. That looks pretty decent. That should give us some decent numbers in which to start with. So let's go ahead and copy all of this and then open up your favorite spreadsheet software. I use OpenOffice because it's free and you know the money you save you can spend on car parts. Always thinking. So now that we've got that done, let's paste this in here. It's going to ask, you can do tab separated, it'll paste it in properly, and we've got all this data. Well, the first thing that we need to do is highlight row A, sort descending, and then choose extend selection. This will flip the table over so it is set up like the Terminator X is. Now your lowest KPA is down here up to your highest. So what we need to do is figure out where one bar is at because we want to do efficiency, max efficiency for a naturally aspirated setup at one bar. We know at one bar, we should be breathing in as much air as humanly possible on this motor. Now, granted, you can exceed 100% efficiency on these motors, but you're never gonna see more than one bar unless you're boosted. If you're boosted and you have a graph already built for a boost table, we're still gonna focus on the one bar because that should be where we're kind of on that efficiency range of this is the max that the engine would breathe at atmospheric. If, let me know if that doesn't make sense. So let's kick back over to the VCM editor here, find one bar, we're in here 95 to 105. We're looking for row 1302. So if we come back to our spreadsheet, find our 1302, which is right here on row 20. We're now looking for the highest number in this row and it's gonna be down towards the higher RPM ranges. You can just follow it down and it might peak out and then go back down. So we've got 2125 here, 2135, which is probably be our highest one. We'll go ahead and select that one and let's copy it. We need to move it out to the side and here's why. Whenever we paste it over here, what we're gonna do is then highlight it again and copy it. There's a method behind this madness. Now that it's copied, I want you to select the whole table, come back. Oops, I didn't quite get the whole table. Let's try that again. Select the whole table. And if you right click, you have the option of paste special. 
Underneath here, we're going to want to divide, and you'll see why here in a second. Now that we've divided this, we have basically decimals, which means percentages. If we look at the percentages, we come back over, here's the one that we use. That's 100% efficiency. So what we can do then is kind of the same ordeal, where we take 100 in here to shift everything over to make it an actual percentage. Copy that cell. Paste it in. Special. And this time we're going to multiply. So now we have more of a volumetric efficiency table. In fact, you can see as we get into boost here, we have volumetric efficiency that exceeds uh, 100%. That's perfectly okay. We're not worried about getting this dialed in. We want to get this within a certain percentage so we can load this up and allow the wideband on the Holly system to do the self-tuning. We need it to be close because the closer we are to being on accurate fueling, the easier it is for the system to make the changes, the quicker you get all the tuning done, get everything smoothed out, looking good. That being said though, we're not gonna have 100% efficiency most likely on this setup whenever we initially go in. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put 10 in here and kind of do the same thing. Copy that, highlight the whole table, Come on now, work with me. Be easier if I had a mouse. And we'll do paste special this time, but we're going to subtract 10 from it. Okay, so now we've got a more realistic table. We're going to copy this thing over and go into our Terminator X, highlight our whole table here, and paste it. I guess we just highlight it and hit Control V. There it is. Now we are in percentages. As you can see, we're down low around idle. We're at 20, 30 percent volumetric efficiency. We can open up the graph, take a look at it if it looks a little wonky. That's not too bad. It's fairly smoothed out. It will give us somewhat of a starting point. Now you see some weird, this normally will kind of follow your uh, torque curve. This is a North Star engine, so it might look a little bit weird, this table set up off of the North Star. But this should get us within the area of being able to start the car, use the wideband, get everything tuning. And once again, I really want to thank the guys that pointed out the fact that this is a percentage table. You guys saved me a lot of headaches down the road. That's what I love about uh, having this community of, of, of people who are just DIYers, you know, shade tree mechanics, guys doing this stuff in their garage. Once again, I want to give a huge shout out to the guys that took the time to comment on the previous video to say, hey, this is the wrong way to set up that table. It's in percentage. And that, you know, got the gears turning and made me think of a way, well, how can we take an existing table and actually change it over into a percentage that will work on our setup? Now, the ultimate test is going to be whenever we load it into the car, to see if we can get the car to run off of it. I don't have my doubts that we'll be able to make it work. That being said though, as I said, I appreciate everybody's input in the comments down there. We are a community, we're working together to share this information. And you know, that's the whole purpose of me doing this is to share information. I can't do it without you guys sharing information with me also. So never hesitate to ask questions, post comments, thoughts, critiques, all that stuff. You guys saved me a lot of digging around trying to figure out what in the world was going on whenever I loaded this thing up. So another big shout out to the guys that uh, helped me out on this one. That being said, I got to dive back underneath the hood of this thing. I am uh, trying to button up a couple things. I've got a power issue somewhere I need to track down. You know, whenever you change this much wiring on something, who knows what's going on. Uh, but there's going to be some interesting stuff coming up here soon where we start to hack into the CAN bus. I'm going to start sniffing some messages, showing you how to do message uh, analyzing, how to do filtering, trying to figure out the different messages that the ECM is sending to the uh, data bus, be it the BCM or if there is a communication module on the vehicle and uh, which, the, you know, how to decipher those messages. And then maybe we can try and figure out a way to do some uh, CAN bus gateway stuff because I'm going to try and make the stock gauge cluster work with the Holly EFI. Uh, if I can do it without having to run the stock ECM, I know I can do it with the stock ECM as a piggyback, basically a dummy uh, ECM in there that is just taking a couple values from different sensors and sending it over to the gauge cluster. But if I can take the values from the uh, Holly E5, which has its own CAN protocol, convert those over to uh, the message format that will match what the gauge cluster is normally uh, used to seeing, I mean, that's going to be the ideal way of doing it, but that requires a lot of legwork. I've done stuff like this in the past on the LIN bus, uh, you know, did some really cool development work on that side of stuff. So we'll dive into a little bit of that coming up here soon. Uh, the Holly should be here any day now. 
the race is on whether or not I get this thing running without it uh, on the E22 again, or if it shows up because if it's not running on the E22, we're not going to get it on the E67. The cams are an 8X and a 1X cam. The E67 is looking for 4X cams on there. I'm not swapping those out. That's 500 bucks that could go towards an engine swap. Just not gonna do it. That's a waste of money for something that we really, in the long run, don't care about. You know, it'd be better off just to spend the 500 bucks, put an LS in there and run it off the E67 than it would be to spend 500 bucks to make this one run off an E67. So that's kind of where we're at on that. As always, I want to thank everybody for subscribing. All the new subscribers, welcome to the channel. Check out the live show on Thursdays. Check out the links down in the descriptions. I'll pop all kinds of stuff up during the video. If you saw them, click on them, uh, all that stuff. You know, remember, tuning101.com, that's the easiest way to share the webpage for Goat Rope Garage. Uh, that takes you right to the YouTube. And then, of course, we have GoatRopeGarage.com where you can get merch, uh, links to the Patreon, all that fun stuff. That being said, I'm going to get to work. You guys should be out tuning because you know the motto, ABT, always be tuning.